Hey guys, this is Frozen Things Studios here and welcome to another video and welcome to my birthday special video. Today is my is my birthday and I turned 19 years old, so if you haven't greeted me yet, please do so. And to all who um, greeted me, uh, thank you so much for it. It really means a lot to me, especially with like some of the best people in the internet, um, specifically the Frozen community and my girlfriend, Marilyn. Uh, definitely give her a shout out for it. Uh, she's the best uh, person I've ever met. So yes, um, I have started my um, Frozen Awards 2023 as, as a part of my um, birthday specials. Um, now, but this is the main appetizer. This is the main course. Um, the, the Frozen Awards was just an appetizer for today's videos. Um, so what is it that I'm going to be doing today um, for my birthday video? Well, a lot of YouTube critics that I subscribe to um, would usually... Um, sh um, share with us their um favorite movies from every year they were alive um on their birthday it's a perfect time to do a list like this on their birthday on your birthday because you get to like um honor the the movies that came out in your in the past years that that you've been alive um from the year you, you were born until present and you can also like acknowledge how um how far movies have gone and how far um movies really have evol evolved so there's gonna be a long video but let's see how long this can take i have no idea but yeah, um, hope you guys are doing are having a lot of fun in, in the live stream. And yes, without further ado, um, here here are my favorite movies from every year I was alive. I was born in two thousand four, so we're gonna talk about two thousand four until two thousand twenty two. Um, if you have a movie, um, like um from the past years, uh, like before two thousand four, that you share in the comments, I I can feel free to give my favorite movies like before two thousand four, like. For example, if you're born 2001 and you're going to give me your favorite movies of, uh, from 2001, 2003, then I'll, I'll reply in the call. I'll share my favorite movies from 2001, 2003 in the reply section, um, in the reply. Um, so without further ado, let's get this list started. My favorite movie 2004, aka The Year I Was Born, The Incredibles. Now, I really wanted to go with Spider-Man 2 so badly because uh, I wish because... Uh, um, Spider-Man 2 is what I grew up with. I grew up with Spider-Man 2 more than I did with Incredibles and, but here's the thing people, I'm not really a type, I'm not really like one of those people who's blinded by nostalgia, like, oh, I love this movie because I grew up with, I, I can name a lot, lot, like some movies I grew up with, but I don't really care for now. Um, I still think Spider-Man 2 is a masterpiece and definitely honorable mention, but I just think The Incredibles is simply better. Um. Yeah, The Incredibles is, uh, The Incredibles duology is my favorite Pixar duology. Incredibles 2 is my favorite Pixar movie. Um, though, sadly, though, Incredibles 2, um, it's not my favorite movie, 2018. Not even my favorite animated, because, you know, it was overshadowed by some movies, but thankfully, there's no movie to overshadow The Incredibles. I mean, 2004 was an incredible year. Probably my favorite, um, or either my favorite or second favorite year in the 2010, 2000s decade, um, um, it goes back and forth with another um year in the thousand decade two thousands decade that I'll uh, mention uh, later on. But thousand four had the uh, Shrek two, uh Spider Man two, um well Spider Man two about Shrek two, um Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, um Mean Girls. I mean, there's so many incredible movies in thousand four, um, and but The Incredibles is um just the my favorite of them all. Yeah, this is. Maybe my second favorite Pixar franchise, um, second favorite animated franchise. Uh, y'all know that Frozen is my favorite animated franchise, but I think when Across the Spider Verse comes out, uh, Spider Verse is most likely gonna take my second favorite animated franchise spot. But The Incredibles, um, yeah, what else can I say? Brad Bird is my favorite Pixar director. I mean, he also did besides this and the sequel, he also did the. Um, Ratatouille, and uh, now he's really evolved into uh making an R-rated animated movie. Um, it's upcoming one with um Ray Gun, which is a Skydance animation, and I'm for sure it's gonna be the best uh Skydance animation. Too bad that that studio didn't really um, that that, that studio um like began that like like milk like because of freaking luck. But um, yeah, Bradford is uh, is one of the greatest animated directors. I said one of. He's not my favorite. That's still Chris Buck, and that's still Chris Buck. Chris Buck is still the best animated director, but Brad Bird is top five easily. I love, like, his directing style. I love that the way that Brad Bird portrays family. Like, I, I've never seen anyone, like, like depict, um, you have used uh, family depiction in, in a movie better than Brad Bird, which is why I wish he directed, um, 
uh, fan he um was chosen to direct a Fantastic Four MCU movie. Hopefully, he directs another uh, X Men, the, the Mutants, because he would deserve it. Because he deserves to direct a movie about family. Um, and uh, let me ask, Brad Bird has never made a single bad movie. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I love most of his movies. Um, and I one million percent defend the Tomorrowland. Uh, maybe it, it's probably his weakest film, but I still one hundred percent defend it. Though. Uh, and the Incredibles is just like a masterpiece in every single level. Um, the score, the writing, the family dynamics. Um, it, it it's just brilliant. Um, despite Violet being overall my favorite Incredibles character, that's mainly because of Incredibles too. But in this movie specifically, I, Violet isn't really my favorite. I say she's my third favorite. Uh, Frozen is the standout. Uh, in, in my opinion, you know, honey, where is my super suit? Yeah, you can't um. Yeah, you can't um get um you can't not talk about this without the code. I mean, you can't talk about this without uh, mentioning that meme code, uh, best Pixar code in my opinion. Like nothing can top it. Like, th yeah, Frozen's definitely a standout in my opinion. Even if Incredibles though he wasn't really as good, but I I prefer Incredibles to I may prefer Incredibles to slightly, but yeah, woman. Well, like, why am I spending too much time here? There's a lot of movies I can talk about, but yeah. My favorite movie 2005 is Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, uh, aka my favorite Star Wars movie. Um, yeah, um, I don't care what anyone says, I don't care what the prequel here says. I mean, like, I feel like people who hate this movie are just uh, biased against the prequels. They only hate this uh, j j just because they, they, they hated um, Fan of the Mess and the and Attack of the Clothes, and they, and they just can't, um, like, seem to give this one, like, a chance. Uh, what I love about uh, Star Wars Adventure of the Sith is that this, um, you gotta acknowledge that this feels like the most important uh, Star Wars movie because it's when um, Anakin uh, turns to the dark side. Um, it's, uh, this is when uh, he becomes uh, Darth Vader and uh, he um, seduces himself to the dark side and we, we get to see why Anakin turns to the dark side and and you really feel that, like you really feel that Anakin, like, like you know, Anakin feels betrayed by Obi-Wan and he's a, uh, um, manipulated by Palpatine, um, and, 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 and he wants to, um, he, wa he wants to save Padme, but he does it in, 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 in the wrong way, and, uh, he thinks that Obi-Wan is the bad guy, and, uh, and you really understand that Anakin's motives, um, Obi-Wan, Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi is, uh, is my favorite Star Wars character, I will stand by that, uh, which is probably why I, I biasly love the, um, Obi Wan Kenobi show, and I, and I still defend it to this day. I should rewatch it uh, anytime soon, but I defend um like Obi Wan Kenobi. I yeah, because Obi Wan Kenobi, I'm just such a fan of him. I I love the a new whole version of Obi Wan, but even McGregor's Obi Wan. Well, I don't love him in um in Phantom Menace, like honestly. But Attack on Clones and uh, this is probably where he becomes my favorite Star Wars character, despite um not not being a fan of Attack on Clones. I mean. He has one of the best, uh, some of the best, you know, one lines, like, you know, hello there, and, hello there, and, you know, it's over, I can, I have a haggard, well, actually, you know what, um, this is the reason why, this movie is the reason why Obi-Wan's my favorite character, like, and, Star Wars character, and I think the main reason why I love this movie so much, that like, it's my favorite Star Wars movie, is just the fact that this is one that, if there's any Star Wars movie that I go back to, this is the one, I mean, this movie has so much action to it. This is the most uh, action back Star Wars movie. Like action is, uh, it's just a play, guys. Sorry, I'm out there. But yeah, like this has the most um action in, in, in any Star Wars movie. It's just dark. This is the darkest Star Wars movie in my eyes. This is the darkest. Damn it, I'm, I'm distracted. Sorry, guys. But yeah, this is the darkest Star Wars movie ever. Um, and the most action back, and also like. John Williams' score um, is at his best. Uh, like, I love what John Williams did to the score. It's just, like, especially Battle of the Heroes. Anakin vs. Obi-Wan is the uh, greatest uh, lightsaber battle, and no other fight season in Star Wars comes close to that one. Just, wow. Yeah, I hope you guys, um, if you're one of those prequel cool haters who hates this just because of Phantom Menace and Dark of the Clones, then give this one a chance. But, yeah, um, I love Batman Begins. I know people, most people say that's the best movie that's in fire, but in my opinion, it's Revenge of the Sith. Um, Batman Begins is a is close second, no, or maybe not close, but still second. All right, now we're heading to two thousand six. My favorite movie of that year is Casino Royale. Um, yeah, 
um, Casino Royale is um, a um, is a masterpiece. Now, I am a huge diehard fan of Bond. I think it is um, the best action franchise. I haven't thought about Bond recently um, after uh, No Time to Die's one year anniversary back then or like rather end of September when I started rewatching the Craig Bond films. But um, yeah, Casino Royale, um, by the way, you're gonna, spoiler alert, you're going to be hearing a lot of these uh, Craig Bond films on its uh, um, as my favorite movie of its respective year, because let's be real, I adore every single Bond movie except for one. I mean, Craig Bond movie except for Quantum of Solace. That movie is bad. Um, but yeah, Casino Royale is just a masterpiece. Um, uh, I love this movie to death. Yeah, Two Thousand Six was a, was was not a very good year, but at least we got some really strong films like um, The Departed and The Prestige. But Casino Royale, in my opinion, uh, topples both those movies because. Yeah, let's be real. Um, Casino Royale is probably the best written Bond film. I will say that it's not really my personal favorite Bond film. It's not really the Bond film I choose to to rewatch uh, the most. If we're gonna like talk about you know rewatching Bond, uh, but I mean Casino Royale um is the best made one. It has the best story, and I mean I, I mean, I, and I love Daniel Craig's interpretation of Bond. Uh, Daniel Craig is my favorite Bond, and it's not even close. I mean I love. I love seeing a uh, cold-hearted Bond, a uh, Bond like Daniel Craig. He he he's like the the, the defender Bond, in my opinion. Like more than Sean Connery. I mean, I I get that pe- people view Bond as being goofy, but I heard that the, I haven't read the Ian Fleming's novel, but I heard that from what I heard, like Bond is really meant to be this way, like how he was in Casino Royale. He's meant to be dark and gritty, and violent, and I love that. This movie has a perfect three act structure, where like you know it starts with that. Some a- action in the, in the in the first act, and then we get the casino, uh, a casino, um, like casino ba- like a poker game in the second act where Bond has to compete with the the villain Lashif, who is like still mad to this day, Matt Mikkelsen's uh, definitive role, and um, the third act is a love story. It becomes a love story between uh, um, James Bond and Vesperlin. Vesperlin is easily the standout of this movie, in my opinion. Ah. Uh, like I can see why she's the fan favorite Bond girl. Yeah, sure. She's not. She's not as good as Paloma from No Time to Die, but um, top three, um, definitely. Like, I love her character. Maybe as a character arc and the way she was written, maybe she's the best one. Like when it comes to character writing, and Eva Green um gives a spot on performance. Like Eva Green has never um done a performance just as uh, glorious as uh, um as Vesper Lynn. I love and her like um uh, and. I and her um betraying Bond and uh, killing herself and dying is probably the most important uh, um Bond, um the most important um like scene in in, in the entire Craig Bond franchise. So uh, without Vesperlin's death, we wouldn't have like you know had the plot move forward. Uh, um, um Vesperlin's death is the reason why um Bond is who he is and his journey uh throughout the throughout from Quantum of Solace to No Time to Die, um and. Without um Vesselin's death, we wouldn't have the uh, we wouldn't have Man and Swan, uh, who I think is slightly better than, than Vesper. So yeah, um, this movie's been oh yeah. Also, rest in peace to Chris Cornell, the the, the guy who performed the um opening credits song. Man, um, what what a shame that song didn't get a nominee for uh best original song. It should have had. Coming in two thousand seven is Enchanted. Um, yeah, I know two thousand seven wasn't wasn't an in, incredible year for movies. I mean, there were so many movies that come in, in, on the top of my head, like um, um, like um, No Country for Old Men, the best picture winner that year. There will be Blood, The Board Ultimatum, um, uh, The Board Ultimatum, um, and um, like um, so many others. Some um, super bad. The uh, like others, I I can't I, I forgot. I'm sure there are so many more. Um, there's a uh, Ratatouille, which uh, would have been my favorite movie that's in seven, but like maybe like one that I feel like could probably be my fa- become my favorite movie that's in seven in the future. Um, I, I'm a huge br- fan of Brad Bird. As you all know, he's my favorite picture director, and Ratatouille could co- contribute to that. Um, to Brad Bird being the best picture director, but I think what's more um. I think the reason why I chose Enchanted over Ratatouille is that if I were to choose one that um, I would like rewatch more this or Ratatouille, it would probably be Enchanted. Like, I- I'm a huge sucker for Disney Princess. I'm a 
I have a huge uh, soft spot for Disney Princess. I know people are going to be like, oh, but Disney Princess is for girls. Well, shut up and who cares? I mean, I, I can like girl stuff all I want, but this one is very unique. Um, I, I love that, you know, the whole idea of uh, Giselle going, um, Giselle, like, heading into the real world. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, like, I, I love this whole concept of a cartoon character. Um, uh, cartoon character you know i'm meeting real life people i know people say oh it's just a fish out of our story but to me i think it's kind of original and amy adams uh, just as amy adams uh definitive performance uh, for me um and um I, I just love her charm uh can't you get annoying times well kind of but um which is probably why i prefer disenchanted over this and yes i still stand by my opinion disenchanted that movie is underrated but enchanted is just something um yeah, I mean, I, 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 I do wish that there were more songs. I mean, well, yeah, it's not really nitpicks or flaws. I'm just pointing out. I actually don't mind it's no songs. So. This movie is just so hilarious and had, like, so many, like, great jokes. And, I mean, so many charm to it. I, I, I love the charm. And, and of course, well, Idina Menzel's uh, Nancy Wheeler is a standout for me. Um, also, um, Samantha, um, also, um, Morgan, Morgan from the... The sequel, like Teen Morgan from Disenchanted, is my favorite uh, character in the entire Enchanted duology. Um, Nancy Wheeler, um, yeah, I, I, I love that. I love Nancy and I love Adina Menzel so much. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I love this movie so much. Uh, I think this movie deserves more love as well. Like, no one seems to talk about this movie. Like, so yeah, love Enchanted. Um, coming into, in 2008, I mean, um, it, it, it's a really obvious pick, uh, The Dark Knight. Uh, now, I, I, I would say uh, Forgetting Sarah Mar Marshall is a little more personal to me. Like, for Forgetting Sarah Marshall, it, probably the most, uh, the movie doesn't aid that, that's probably kind of the most personal to me. But I gotta be honest, um, I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's it, it's the best movie of its respective year. Maybe if it came out in, in like 2007, then it would have been the best movie in 2007. Um, but honestly, the only reason why I love I would love I love forgetting Sarah Marshall, or you know what? Never mind. Uh, I I have reasons to love forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's my favorite rom com of all time. But the Dark Knight um is something like this movie really like like you know it's good when you know a movie that uh, like is more well made uh, like goes above a movie that's more personal to me. You know you you know how how like amazing the Dark Knight is. Well, it did get topped by the by. Uh, by the Batman as the best uh, Batman movie ever made uh, and it's not even my favorite Christopher Nolan movie it's like third favorite The Dark Knight is something special like Heath Ledger as a Joker is one of the greatest it's top 10 performances of all time now I do prefer Joaquin Phoenix's Joker in my opinion but I think The Dark Knight is a better movie than, than Joker um Joker's standalone movie yeah recipes Heath Ledger you'll be missed um, Heath Ledger is a perfect Joker. Um, although yes, I like what I said. Joaquin Phoenix is still my is still my Joker. Um, and um, I I I love the um like everything else about this film. People say like I know there's some people say oh, but Joker's the only thing that makes Dark Knight special. But there are other elements you can praise in the Dark Knight, like um, you know um like the writing, how this is just not just a super not just a superhero movie, but a riveting crime drama. And like you know, like some of the like um the most um, epic uh, action scenes, uh, um, the most uh, epic uh, action scenes, in my opinion. Um, like it's, there's so many iconic scenes you can you can name, like so many iconic scenes. Uh, um, my favorite scene for me is the ending. You know, like you know when um, Bam like the like Batman like wants the police to chase him, and and then uh, Jim Gordon says you know that that Batman is not just a hero. Um. He, but, but 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 he's a villain vigilante in the dark night uh, and he acknowledges that that batman is not a, a, a perfect person and I, I love the ending but of course i also love other scenes like some of the most iconic scenes like um like the opening cut scene the highway chase and the batman inter interrogating the joker which is probably the most iconic scene in the in the whole movie and i can see why but yeah nothing much else to say Sarah Marshall is probably my favorite character of 2008, but Joker, yeah, Joker is just some. It's just special. Um, so coming 2009. Oh boy, let the controversy begin. Avatar. Um, yeah, sure. Um, while it's not as good as um, 
not as good as Titanic and Terminator 2, and certainly not as good as uh, as its sequel, which I'll get to later. Um, Avatar um, seduces itself as, as the most uh, overly hated uh, James Cameron movie. Like, I will never understand the hate for Avatar. It, this movie is... This movie really changed the uh, movies forever. This movie is a game changer to movies. Uh, I could rewatch it in the future and maybe like put this higher in the list. Maybe this could seduce itself as my favorite or second favorite of the thousand second. Oh well, maybe not really. Um, but yeah, I mean, two thousand nine is like er- earlier. I said in two thousand four, part I said that you know th- there was another movie that I would like personally call it like um the best movie of uh of of the best. De- um, year of the dust decade. Uh, this is the other um, best year of the decade, uh, in my opinion. I mean, you got so many strong films. This movie also an incredible year. It goes back and forth between 2004 and 2009, uh, which is my on uh, which is my favorite. But thinking about it, right now maybe 2004 is the, is truly the best year of the decade. But well, 2009 is second. Like Inglorious Bastards was the best movie 2009 before this, but. After I saw Avatar: The Way of Water, um, it actually made me love this even more. And uh, well, as far as putting this in, in, in the top ten, uh, as my number one favorite movie, that's not. I mean, yeah, say what you want about the story and the characters, but this movie really changed uh, movies forever. This is the highest grossing movie of all time, and um, this movie changed the landscape of film mainly because of its visuals. Like some of the most uh, visually stunning movies ever put the film. If you think that if you think that the visuals are bad, then you're obviously lying. You like, like you can't like the visuals are, are just impossible to hate. I mean, the, I wouldn't say this movie is impossible to hate, but the visuals like if you hate this movie, then the, then you're a coward. I'm sorry. I'm not to attack anyone, but I'm sure there's no one in the world who says the visuals are bad. Uh, I mean, what the hell is that? But anyway, uh, I don't think I heard that. But anyway, yeah, this movie is a masterpiece. Um. I reviewed this movie already back in September. I think I'm, I'm gonna like talk a little less about these movies, especially when we head on to thousand decade, mainly because I'm running out of time and I got other things to do. So yeah, um, but yeah, Avatar just massive beast. And yes, people, I defend the story and characters. I mean, I really resonate with the characters, especially in the theory. And um, I don't think the story is a book of hundreds rip off. And if it, if it is a book of hundreds rip off, I mean. I'm actually thinking of declaring my thoughts in Boko Hontas, um, and it's not even that well received, so what's the point of calling this a rip-off to a movie that's not even that good? I mean, but I'll give it a rewatch to see what my thoughts in it um, in the future. Alright guys, we're heading into the 2000s dec- 2010s decade, aka the best decade for movies. Now, like, I've talked a lot about these movies in, in the 2000s decade, like, as I'm recording this, I'm 20 minutes in, like, I- I'm slightly past that, so... I'm gonna talk less about these movies, um, and I, I could review them in the future, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk less about them, so I won't spend too much time here, but... Alright, starting off the 2010 decade, my favorite movie 2010, Inception. Um, 2010 is often regarded as the best year of the, of the 2010 decade. I would say it's it's my in my top 5 favorite favorites of the 2000 decade, but there are better uh, years uh, in, in the decade. Yeah, Inception um, goes back and forth between my favorite Nolan film. Um, it's either this or another Nolan film, which I'll get to later. It goes back and forth between those two, which is my favorite Nolan film. Uh, but right now, Inception is number two. I mean, I love Inception. Um, yeah, I mean, Inception, Inception is actually what made, made me um, view movies on, 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 on a different perspective. Like, back in 2018, I was... Like, my dad sh- showed me Inception, and I... And I fell in love with it like i fell in love with the rich and complex story and the uh the mind boy actually sees and the direction that nolan took this film uh like he really took took this film to a whole new level like like just like avatar this is one of those movies that, that i consider filmmaking to, to, to a whole new level i mean i love everything about this movie and i love the characters i know i know there's some people who do dislike Ar- ariana because because all she does is just follow come around and ask questions but I think Ariadne to me is my favorite character. I um, in the movie, I love um. I love um, like you know her. I mean, and she does more than just um, she, um, she does more than just follow Cobra around and asking like what the dream is. Like most of the dreams that this movie shows are actually made by her, which is something. Which is something she does to all you idiots who think that she does nothing in the film. You're absolutely wrong for that. Uh, yeah, I I don't want to bash anyone's opinions, but you know, if you want to if you want to bash something like you know. 
say something negative um like about like like I think um you gotta get your facts straight first and not a lot of people get their facts straight for Ariane. Um but yeah but I think where where this movie's hi- highlight comes from is this is the um visuals and the action scenes uh yeah th- this is mind blowing. It's it's really mind blowing how the visuals are like and and um also the score, uh top tier hand zimmer score for me. I just like especially the score of the hallway fight, I still uh Hum the score to this day, and, and, and the whole big fight still gives me chills. It's in my top 10 favorite movie scenes of all time. So, yeah, nothing much else to say about Inception. Oh, yeah, and the villain is underrated as well. Like, maybe my second, probably my second favorite character. Sometimes she may be my favorite character, either my favorite character or my second favorite character. It depends on my guts. Coming in 2011, it's probably a hard choice between two movies. So, uh, Harry Potter and Deathly Artist Part 2, and then we got Mario Scorsese and Hugo, which I ended up going for. Harry Potter and Deathly Artist Part 2 is the best Wizarding World movie and the most uh, epic movie that's in level, but Hugo to me, like, probably, if I were to choose which movie I would go to between Prisoner, between Deathly Artist Part 2 and Hugo, I would say Hugo. Hugo is something special to me. Um, now I know there are people who say that, that this is Mario Scorsese's weakest film and that it's not that, nothing special. I don't get it. Um, to me, this is, to me, my favorite Martin Scorsese movie. I mean, yeah, this movie makes Goodfellas look, look mediocre in comparison. And, I mean, I love Goodfellas, I, but honestly, Goodfellas is not the best Martin Scorsese movie. I mean, I even prefer Wolf of Wall Street and then parted over, uh, um, over Goodfellas. But, damn, Hugo is something special. Like, like it's... I, I think this movie, what made me put this over Deathly Artist Part 2 is how this movie uh, really um, resonated with me. And it sucks that no one talks about this. Like, this movie doesn't get enough credit. Um, where credit do. Um, this movie is just beautiful. It's very touching and it's very magical as well. I mean, you really feel the charm to it. Uh, Chloe Grace Moretz is the standout here. Um, this and the Perry Farrell are both tied as her best performance. Or maybe if I, if I were to choose one, I'd say the Perry Farrell. Um, the recent uh, Prime Video show that I think is underrated, but Hugo is also underrated. I mean, I love the score to it. I think it's it's beautiful looking. Although I would have personally gave the given the best visual effects award to Deathly House Part Two. Now that's something that that movie film does better than uh, Hugo, and I just love the I love the performances and I I, I love this this uh, I still love there to Hollywood. Um. Like, I mean, out of all the movies that, you know, depicts Hollywood and is, is considered a love letter to Hollywood, this is the best of them all, in my opinion. Just, wow. I mean, yeah, this movie needs more support as well. Also, this also this, this is a perfect example of how to do a great family movie. Um, Scorsese really understands family movies. And, yeah, this is my favorite of the live-action family movies. Um, brilliant. I love it. Um... Coming to us in 12 is Skyfall. I won't say much about this uh, because um, I think that uh, um, I, re- I reviewed Skyfall. And I'll just say, yes, I do prefer Skyfall over Casino Royale. And this is, yeah, again, another Bond film that makes my favorite movie of its respective year. Um, but yes, Skyfall is something. It's just something. I love Skyfall. This movie's a little more entertaining than Casino Royale. But I t- maybe this and Casino Royale could go back and forth between which Bond movie I prefer, but but right now, my per- my preference goes to Skyfall. Um, this movie takes takes some um, influence from The Dark Knight. Uh, this movie, this movie's success really comes from The Dark Knight because, you know, this movie really tries to recapture the success of The Dark Knight. I mean, this, the story is just as dark as The Dark Knight is, uh, uh, no pun intended. Um, and, um, um, Silva, who I think to be is easily the best character in the film, is, um, um, it is basically the dead Joker um, of uh, Bond films, and um, and he really uh, like he's really a menace. He's really terrifying. He's really terrifying. And I love him. I love the action scenes. I love like, like this movie is the most one of the more action packed Bond films, and this is the most visually stunning Bond film. Um, thanks to Roger Deakins, the 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 goat of um. Um, the, the goat of film directors and maybe one of the best people working in Hollywood to this day um, and um, I just love this movie and let's not forget Skyfall like the Adele like song Skyfall yeah I love this movie top 3 Bond films of all time okay coming in 2013 um, which is pretty much like celebrating its 10 year anniversary this year uh, my favorite movie 2013 is Bastille 
2013 was an incredible year for animation. No, 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 not, no, 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 hell no, it sucked for animation. 2013 sucked for animation, but I think 2013 was an incredible year when it comes to these uh, dramas and Oscar bait films. You know, you got films like Prisoners, The Wolf of Wall Street, um, and so many others I can name uh, that I can't really think of one right now. But out of all the movies in 2013, um, the one that I go back to is Man of Steel. Like, I, I feel disappointed that Henry Cavill is no longer returning as Superman because Henry Cavill is the uh, defective Superman. Like, there's no other Superman like Henry Cavill. Not even Christopher Reeves come close. Like, like he makes uh, Christopher Reeves look like the one from from Superman 4 Recipes. And I don't even remember who played him. If it was Christopher Reeves or someone else, I don't really care. But saying Maxwell is the best Superman movie is an understatement. This movie, this movie is just incredible in every single way possible. Like... Like, this is my Superman. Like, Henry Cavill is my Superman. I love this whole dark take on on, on the Cape Crusader Superman. Um, and I love this old, cold character arc. I mean, this movie really goes a lot more in, in depth with Superman than you think. And, um, and um, yo, um, this movie is just really dark and, and intense. Uh, Zack Snyder really understands Superman. Like, people say, people say that Zack Snyder doesn't understand Superman, but he, he understands it, but he's just, he wants a different thing of Superman. Because, come on, we live in a modern world, uh, like, like you know, we, we don't want a happy-go-lucky Superman. Um, and I don't find Superman lifeless at all. I think this movie, Superman feels like he's more full of life. I, I, I love dark and broody films. I'm a huge sucker for dark films, and Man Seal is exactly that. I'll, I'll go more in-depth of my review of, of Man Seal for its 10-year anniversary this June. Um, the Suicide Squad is currently my favorite uh, DC movie, but one day this can seduce itself as my favorite uh, DC movie. I just need to rewatch the Suicide Squad back and back and maybe go deeper analysis into it. Coming 2014 is my favorite Christopher Nolan movie, Interstellar. Um, yeah, Interstellar is is just something special. Now, yes, like, like what I said, maybe there could be a common time when Inception could take its crown jewel as the best. Uh, Nolan movie, but right now, Interstellar is my favorite move. Nolan movie. I mean, Interstellar is just like something so magical, something so charming, something so magic, so emotional. I mean, um, despite I love Inception, I think one thing that that uh, that makes Interstellar stand out from Inception is the emotional impact. This movie ma- really made me tear up, uh, and it's just so beautiful. I. Like, love this movie too. And I mean, this is also the Nolan's uh, most uh, visually starring movie. Just the way he did back space. And yes, people, this is the uh, greatest uh, space movie ever made, period. I mean, Christopher Nolan was an absolute genius, genius in this. Making a story that's just so um, complex and so um, so um, complex and so rich and yet, yet so emotional. Um, and Murphy's, Murphy is probably my, might be my favorite. Murphy might be my favorite character in the film. I mean, yeah, sure, I love Joker, but, but Murphy is just on another, another level. Like, okay, you know, I, I take that back. Maybe Joker is still the best uh, Nolan movie character. Of uh, Ariana and Murphy are also up there. Like, either one of those three, I would say. But, like, I love Jessica Chastain as Murphy. Um, Jessica Chastain, this is her best performance ever. I just love her character, her her uh, performance, her um, emotional way to it. I mean, I, like... Jessica Chastain was Oscar worthy in this film. Like, but in my personal opinion, I think my I think Mackenzie Ford is my favorite. Um, my favorite version of um, Murphy. I just, I think she really. I feel her character. I think she has a lot of charm to her. She's just also she's just adorable and I uh, I love the father son relationship that that they have in the first act before uh um he uh reached before um Cooper goes to space. Cooper, the main character, played by Matthew McConaughey. Um, yeah, I mean, and I love the whole themes of humanity, and uh, this movie is really about survival for humanity, and it's just like done in just some um, such perfect way um, that I adore. Um, and yeah, I think this movie has some of the best. Uh, like, this is the most riveting um, Nolan film, and yeah, and I shall review this film in the future. Maybe, oh yeah, b- uh, before I continue, I, I before I forget, I'll be reviewing. Uh, Christopher Nolan movies are leading up to um, open his newest film Oppenheimer, so, so stay tuned for that. Coming 2015, oh boy, this is probably the most uh, 
controversial um choice um on, on this list the most controversial thing is this but my favorite movie 2015 would have to be spectre now i will be honest 2015 is one of the weaker years of the 2010s decade for me i love 2015 but i think it's um 2015 is um one just like there's not a lot of movies like i i, I can think of like top of my head the like like there are some movies that I may have given a five out of five, but I I, I wouldn't really rewatch it. Um, and 2015 is one of the worst years for a personal experience. Like there's so many like, th- th- this movie had like so much crap, uh, but I, I want to say it. But um, S- uh, Spectre um, like if there's one thing I love about 2015, it's going to see a Bond film for a Bond film for the first time. So maybe I'm I'm, I'm biased towards Spectre because this is a. The first Bond movie is on Spectre, but damn it, I love Spectre. Spectre is really underrated. This is, um, controversially my uh, second favorite Bond film of all time. Second only behind um. Second only behind um, No Time to Die, and yeah, I am the um biggest defender of Spectre. Um, I love Spectre to death. It's just so good. I mean, I think this movie is a, this movie is a misunderstood masterpiece. I mean. I, I don't like I reviewed this film already and I explained and why it's my second favorite Bond film I just love uh, like you know the, like like how dark this is this is probably the like the uh, darkest Bond film and, and I just love like what but at the same time it still has like you know the Bond sims like this movie really goes back to to being um to feeling like a classic a, a classic Bond I, I I love that we get to see like for what the classic Bond before while well, like Daniel Craig is um most of Craig's other Bond films um is um like feels like his own thing. I mean I'm I'm glad we get to go to that and I I I, and I think Christopher Christoph Waltz is the best bro- blowfield actor. But Madeline Swan is a standout in my opinion. I'm I'm a fan of Madeline Swan. Like she's my second favorite Bond girl of all time. And yeah, I mean there's nothing more I can say. Um I love Spectre and yeah this movie. This movie is really good. Oh yeah, also writing on the wall. I love writing on the wall. So you, if there's any movie that's in fifteen, I would choose to rewatch. I mean, are there better films? May are there better made films in two thousand fifteen? Yes, but I I go I choose Spectre out of all the uh, movies uh, that year. I, I revisit. Coming in two thousand sixteen is Zootopia. Now, Walt Disney Animation Studios is my favorite um studio of all time. Um, yeah, but. but, but my favorite studio of all time, and um, I I haven't mentioned a Walt Disney Animation Studios movie yet on this list, and Zootopia is the first of them all. Um, yeah, Zootopia is is brilliant, man. I can't believe there are people who say this movie is overrated and say it like Moana is better. I mean, I love Moana, but come on, let's be real. What makes Moana better than this? Um, but I don't see anything Moana would do better. Well, yes, I will admit the animation Moana is better than this, but. Zootopia is something truly special. Like, I when I watched Zootopia for the first time in 2016, uh, um, there was like, like I didn't really say it was one of my favorites, but then like there was something that that makes this like one of my favorites. And even my parents knows this is one of my favorite movies. Like this is a, in my top ten favorite movies of like all time. And out of all the previous movies I mentioned, um, so far this is my favorite of them all. But of course, well, it, it's gonna get better from here later on. Uh. But yeah, what makes Utopia so special to me is um, just um, the message of uh, the writing and the message. Like some of the smartest, uh, this is this is the smartest Disney film. Maybe the the smartest. Like when we talk when we talk about the word brilliance, this is the most brilliant uh, Disney anime film. This is also one that you know really um, when I really um talks about you know um prejudice, you know um racism. This movie really tackles like world issues like like this like i've never seen disney take 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 us as, as much of a bigger risk as utopia and julie hobson is top is top three um disney characters of all time maybe second favorite disney character of all time and and disney protagonist as well i love judy hobbs um and she's just so adorable yet yet, yet i really resonate with her i think she, i think judy hobbs is kind of underrated because you know she she, she gets i think judy hobbs is underrated because she gets she gets overshadowed by nick wilde i mean Nick Wallace even the main character is Julie Hobbs, but then but then people just say Nick Wallace is better. I, I I just don't know. I think Julie Hobbs gets overshadowed, so I think she's kind of underappreciated. Uh, uh, but and also Bellwether is the most underrated villain. Like I will never understand the hate for Bellwether. 
could she have should, could she have had more screen time? Yes, but you really understand her motivation. Um, I'll go deeper into Bellwear's character when I review Zootopia as I review the Revival Age films leading up to um, Wish. I was originally supposed to um, review the, um, the Walt Disney Animation Studios film, like the Disney Revival film leading up to Strange World back in November, but then, you know, like my life, but you know, my life in November just got screwed up. I, I had to do other things. I couldn't have time to make videos. That's probably why I put November as my second least favorite month of 2022 because of how my life has just life has gotten away like that much um but I, I couldn't do some of the videos i promised um but yeah coming coming in in 2017 we got the gray showman maybe in some time blade rider 2049 would uh like i wouldn't like i love blade rider 2049 uh um blade rider 2049 had my favorite character 2017 which is uh joy um played by andy armas uh but and I love it, but let's be real. Um, when I look for when I search, well, if there's one thing I search for, I look for in movies, it's entertainment. Like, like that's the one thing I rely on the most when it comes to movies, entertainment. Like, um, if I um watch a movie that is well made but boring, like Marcel, Marcel for example, um, then then I don't like it as much as I as I wanted to. But, but. Yeah, The Greatest Showman is uh, the definition of entertaining. I mean, I rewatched the movie a million times. I mean, Blade Runner 2049 is the best made film of 2017, but if there's one movie that I would like personally revisit, it's The Greatest Showman. Like, this movie is the definition of entertain of an entertaining movie. Like, this movie is just so entertaining. Like, I, I, it just makes me want like, like, you know, when this movie, the, like, the second this movie ends, I want to go back to it again. Um go back to it again because you know this movie is just so good like like i, I can't believe how much i enjoy this movie um i mean it's not even hugh jackman's best performance and that, 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 that goes to wolverine but um this movie's this this movie is like a close friend to me like like you know this movie is something i, I just want to see again i want to re-watch again um i mean yeah sure i, I get why people say it's, it's inaccurate and destroying it but i don't care i mean when you like, I mean, I think the story is really good. I mean, if you ignore um, the historical in inaccuracies that this movie has, uh, you really feel the, um, um, you, you really, um, feel the, uh, I, I don't know how to say it, but, I mean, you really feel the movie. I mean, like, I, I think, um, this character from Tennessee, I mean, I think it's one of those movies where you shouldn't try to understand it, but feel it. I mean, you, if you really feel the movie, you, you'd adore it, you know, and, and, and also, this is this is the this is my favorite uh, live action uh, non Disney musical. Well, technically, it's on Disney Plus and it's under Disney now, but at the time it wasn't. So I think I still name it the best non Disney musical. Um, this is one of the uh, greatest um, soundtrack of all time. Uh, yeah, this I actually had for the longest time. I think this had I thought this had the, the best soundtrack ever put the film until one certain movie topped it, which I'll, I'll get to it like shortly, but. Yeah, um, the greatest showman is just um, um, the greatest showman is just um, wow, just so spectacular. Um, and uh, yeah, Zendaya is the standout for me. Um, I think this is her best, even though MJ is her best performance. I think this this is better than Homecoming version of MJ. This is Zendaya's uh, best performance of, of 2017. Um, yeah. coming in 2018 is Avengers Infinity War. Yeah, you probably would have assumed that I would have put Spider-Verse as uh, um, the, my favorite movie that's in 18 because I love Spider-Verse, but, but Infinity War, man. I mean, sorry to, sorry to disappoint you all, but Infinity War, in my opinion, is better because Infinity War is just the definition of epic. I mean, this movie is what got me to love Marvel movies. Like, while Civil War may be an, an MCU fan, but like, like a true 100% MCU fan, but... Infinity War like solidifies like further solidifies me as an MCU fan. This was my most anticipated movie of all time. It still feels like my like Infinity War still feels like my most anticipated movie of all time to this day. And the fact that this movie actually like not like lived up to expectation to my expectations um is really um satisfying. This was actually my former favorite. This was actually my former favorite movie of all time before. You know th that one movie topped it, and you all know which movie I'm talking about. Um, before that movie topped it, yes, this was my favorite movie, and I can totally see why because this movie was just epic. It's just like this movie is nonstop action. Um, like 
Also, while Endgame is better when it comes to story, and uh, well, Endgame is better in some ways. And maybe if I were to choose one between Infinity War and Endgame, I'd go Endgame. But but um, Infinity War is more enjoyable. I I I put I I put Infinity War and Endgame tied for a reason. And this movie really perfectly sets up what Endgame by um by um like um how do I say this? I forgot um. Like expectations, something subverting your expectations. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I mean, I didn't expect that that, that you know characters would die in the end, but it really makes sense that you know um characters are killed off. Um, characters are um killed off. Um, because uh you really um because um it really perfectly sets up end game. You know, you have these characters like you know, willing to undo what Thanos did, and so it, it really makes sense. Um, um. Yeah, this is the most. I can see why this is the most praised MCU movie. It, it kind of sounds that Endgame is hated nowadays. Maybe at that. Maybe for a time, I could probably pick this over Endgame. But yeah, it sounds like Endgame is getting a lot of hate. But yeah, Infinity War is is a masterpiece in our sense. Coming into 2019 is well, duh, Frozen 2. Um, I don't know what else to say that has been said. Like seriously, um, if we'd like us stay in here, like. If I make a further explanation on on why um Frozen Two um is my favorite movie 2019, if I if I talk about this movie and go more in depth, we'd probably be here like forever. Like, we'd be like like here forever. Um, cause uh, you all know that Frozen Two is my favorite movie of all time. I'm one of these days I'm gonna redo this movie. Um, I, I'm gonna redo this this uh, review and I, I make it like just as long as this video. Uh, because y'all come on guys. Um. It's Frozen 2. It's the it's the best movie ever made, and you can't uh, convince me otherwise. I still don't get. I don't know why people hate this movie. They're all like, this movie is This movie is why I love film. I, I will say, um, Frozen 2 is why I love film. This and this, yeah, like, this movie like like changed my really changed my perspective for film, and it really is close to my heart. But th this movie is like a best friend of me. Like, this movie feels like a best friend of me, and. And 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 this movie is everything I want in a movie and more. And is it? Are there better made? Are there films that are better made than Frozen Two? Yes, but if there's any movie that that would be closer to my heart, it's Frozen Two. That's all I can say about it. Frozen Twenty Nineteen is the best year ever, and, and Frozen Two is the best movie of all time. So yeah, I I don't want to take forever to talk about this movie. So yes, I will eventually redo this movie. But yeah, um, I I'm, I'm proud to have this as, as my first uh. Review of every on my channel, um, yeah. Coming in two thousand twenty, um, AKA the worst year ever. Now, I I don't hate two thousand twenty as much as others do. There are things like think about it. There are some things that I really enjoyed in two thousand twenty, despite the pandemic ruining our lives. There are some things I really enjoyed, but yeah. When it comes to the movies, um, for the longest time I said that uh, um, Christopher Nolan's Tenet was the best movie two thousand twenty, but. Honestly, I was just biased towards Nolan. Uh, I still love Tenet, but Soul is just something special to me. Soul is a movie that's just really special, like as a Pixar movie. I can't believe like Soul is becoming underrated now. I mean, there's some people just not like giving this. This movie doesn't get enough credit anymore, like where credits do. I mean, there are people who say that oh, this movie is mid Pixar. Like people say this movie is mid Pixar. Um, and I don't get it. like Soul is still the, the Soul is still the best. Uh, Pixar movie of, of of the 2020s decade, yeah, even over um like other Pixar movies, that can like, but I think what makes Soul special to me is that um, yeah, what makes Soul special to me is that this movie is um, I don't know um I will eventually review some of the Pixar movies that are leading up to Elemental or either Elemental or maybe another one another Pixar movie we'll see but yeah. Soul is just something special to me because you know this movie really talks about death and life. Um, and, and this movie feels like it's for adults. Like, like you know, I, I'm one of the biggest problems with animation is that um, um, it feels like it's more geared towards kids and it makes adults like feel tortured by watching it. But Soul is a movie that um, that really feels like it's it. it I mean, kids can watch it, of course. I'm not saying it's not for kids, but. I think it's adults who will resonate with this film. Like, the message of this film is for adults. I mean, and I love the message of enjoying life. And, and, and it's holding some of the most uh, beautiful way possible. Yeah, this movie is just beautiful. Um, like, it, it really, like, got me emotional. And I, I watched this film, like, a, a couple of times. Yeah, I think people, like, it's sad that no one talks about this movie anymore. And 
there, I, I've even heard people say Onward is better. I mean, I'm sorry, but like, is there any way that Onward is better like this? I don't see anything Onward did better than this. Um, but yeah, I love Soul so much. Uh, this is the best Pete Doctor movie in my, in my opinion, and my um, and this is my I would put this as my third favorite Pixar movie behind The Incredibles duology. Um, so yeah, I love Soul. Yeah, all right, guys. Uh, man, this is already as I recorded this. This is already the longest video I've ever done on my channel, but we got two more to go. Man, I I'm already having a lot of fun. Coming in 2021 for me is no time to die. Um, yeah. What else can I say that hasn't been said? Uh, this is the best Bond film by a huge landslide. No other Bond movies come close. And and yeah, Bond. I I don't I don't have much to say about this. It hasn't been said. I mean, no time dies defended Bond film. This is the best finale. Of, this is how you do a conclusion, people. This. This is how you do a conclusion to 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 a to a long running franchise. Now, I, I think Bond will still live on. There will still there, like, um, there will be like new Bond, but there's gonna be no Bonds like no other Bond more than like than Daniel Craig. God, this movie is a perfect send off to him. Um, like this is the most emotionally resonating Bond film. This is the this is the Bond film I watched the most times. I watched this I kid you not eight times. Like this is a movie that you know that people complain is too long, but I never complain about the runtime. Like the more I watch it, the more it feels shorter. And I watched this eight times, eight, eight times. That that says something. And and yeah, this movie is really um re resonates with me. This movie like Bond's death, like I don't like it's just so emotional, and and yeah, I mean Billy Ash's No Time to Die is the best Bond song. It, 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 it's like. So many movies see this movie made me cry and um and um yeah I can't believe people um take Bond's death way too seriously. They say oh people will hate Bond's death Bond people will hate Bond's death uh, just to um th because they think that it, it, it progresses Bond girl but the reason why Bond dies this movie is because his arc is complete. He and it like his arc is complete. That, that that's how he completed the arc. I mean it's like um hating on Bond's death this movie is like hating on Iron Man's death in Endgame. Yeah. And this is also, this is also the most action-packed Bond film. Safin is my favorite Bond villain. And of course, Paloma. Is there anything I need to say about Paloma? The best Bond girl ever. And it's not even close. So, and so yeah, but... Like, No Time to Die, for the longest time, I thought that No Time to Die was going to be the best uh, movie of the 2010s decade. Well, maybe until, like, late, until... Um, yeah, I mean, this is gonna be the best movie of the decade until late uh, 2020, like until the late late in the decade, that where something could surprisingly top it. Um, and but like just last year, there was one movie that topped it as the best movie of the decade. And now for the final like year 2022, uh, my favorite movie 2022 is Avatar: The Way of Water. Wow. This movie is a masterpiece. Like this, like this movie is some um, incredible. Like this movie is everything. This movie is some um, why. This movie is solidifies why I love film. James Cameron is one of the greatest directors next to Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee. Um, like he's like a master. Like J James Cameron is like a king of film. Like he really knows how to do film. He knows how to do a blockbuster. And yeah, like. This has the, the, the um this movie like there's so many things I love about this movie. I'm gonna see I'm gonna see this movie a th uh, like I saw this movie twice now and today I'm gonna be seeing this a third time in cinemas and I cannot wait. And not only in cinemas I'm gonna be seeing this in, in IMAX again. Last time I rewatched it I, I saw it in two D like no no regular three D three D but regular cinemas and once again I'm seeing this in, in um in uh three D uh, IMAX. It's impressive that that, that that there's still like a, that, um, it's impressive that that there's there's still a lot of people watching this movie. I mean, even like even like when I um, booked my tickets um for this movie, there's still a lot of like, like I haven't booked my tickets yet, but like the theaters already packed. I mean, of course, well, I'll still be able to get a seat. Uh, don't worry, guys. But the, like the fact that this theater is already packed this day, even if it, it's been a month old, really goes to show how much uh. How much this movie is so good that it could like like if this like i would love this movie to surpass its predecessor as the highest grossing movie of all time 
because this movie is something special. Like, and we need more Pandora. Um, I don't know how, how the story will continue. I, all I know in the third film is that there's going to be a fire in Navi and Quaritch could return. But yeah. I went through The Way of Water is my second favorite movie of all time. And I want to say further of how good this movie is. Um, this is why I went through The Way of Water is, is the best movie of last year. Man, longest video by a huge landslide. But it was worth it, guys. Because this is a birthday special video. Uh, I just want to th thank you all for um, coming to this video. Um, y'all like, like, and thank y'all for my birthday wishes. I mean, I, I, I'm not mad that, that that this is the longest video. If almost this is almost one hour long. Um, um, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. Like that's all I gotta say about this. Uh, so yeah, that's all for my list. Uh, and yeah, don't forget to wish me a happy birthday if you have it. And yeah, like this is already gonna be. This is already the best birthday ever. I gotta say. Um. I, now I'm gonna be cheating saying that because I I recorded this a, a one week ago, but I'm I'm hoping that's gonna be the best birthday ever. So yeah, what are your favorite movies from every year you were alive? Comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for um the, the next part of my Frozen Awards 2023 Best Supporting Actors in a TV Show. Bye guys.